coming. I'm going to flash an image up on the screen quickly. And I want people to capture what they can from it. Ready? <coughs> OK. Anybody need another little quick? I want you to think of the first thing that you see when you look at this slide. Ready? OK. OK. What did you see? Let's hear some things. What did you see in that picture? Good wool coat. Good wool coat. Thank you. Yes, Johnson Wool and wool Mills, Johnson, Vermont. Anything else? What else do we see in that picture? Sound of the guy singing. Yes, sure. A forester, a, a forester using a tablet. Sure. Anything else? Season of gentlemen. Okay. A few things. Now let's take a look. What's going on here? What do we have to work with? We have. We talked about a tablet. We talked about a wool vest, a wool jacket. What else? What else do we have here? An old man. <laughs> Fair enough. I wouldn't have said it. <laughs> the, uh, the, the, you know, there's a vest, a GPS device, a Biltmore stick, baseball cap, polypropylene. Okay. The thing that I noticed the most, the reason I took this picture, this is my friend Jeff. We were out cruising together. That smile, man. He's happy. He's enjoying himself. He's got his act together, he's out there, he's, he has his kit, you know? My name's Don Downey. I'm a consulting forester from Central Vermont. And I am the founder of Forest Metrics. Forest Metrics Pro, the new product that we're unleashing, is the first completely self-contained timber crew software analysis reporting <coughs> system directly from a mobile device with no desktop required. Tell me why you are here, okay? I want to hear, why, why specifically are you here, whether it's at this conference or in this room? Why are you here? What are you, what are you trying to get out of this? Anyone? Inventory solutions. Inventory solutions, okay. Anybody else? Any other thing that they're trying to, it can be general, it can be specific. In the inventory solution that you're looking for, why? Why do you need an inventory solution? Um, Windows grew and didn't support the mobile device center. I can't talk anymore, and the two-dog program that I'm running is very old. Okay, so so deprecating hardware. And why don't you just want to, you know, tally and excel? Um, I don't like to work that hard. I don't like to work that hard either. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> exactly. I could just skip to the last slide right now. Okay. <laughs> I'm here because might sound a little weird. I don't want to be here. I want to be there. Okay? I don't want to be in the office any more than anybody in here. I didn't get into forestry so I could work in the office. All right? I have kind of a passion, my wife might say, a, an illness for trying to figure out easier ways to get things done. I'm, I'm lazy. Okay? I don't want to work more than I have to. I don't want to waste time. I'm looking for an easy, efficient way to do whatever it is whether it's sawing timbers, whether it's tying flies, whether it's cruising, I want to find easier ways to do things, okay? What we're going to do is, we're doing a little bit of an intro right now, we're setting the stage, I want to tell you folks where this is headed. I'm going to give you a bit of background about this company and about what we're doing here. I'm going to show you a demo of this system that we launched quite recently. We're going to have a little bit of Q&A, or as much Q&A as folks want. This can be very, I hope that it's participatory. People don't have to sit and wait. If you have a question, raise your hand or just yell it out, okay? There's plenty of flexibility here. We have plenty of time. We got started on time. We will end on time. And then I will wrap things up with a brief quote. Now, let's, let's go back and unpack this image a little bit more, okay? There's something really neat going on here. When you kind of look at all these pieces, name those six or seven things, and somebody, right off the bat, wool coat, Johnson Wool and Mills, 1842, okay, 175-year-old piece of technology, Bill Moore stick, 1895, for Jeff, it's quick, it's easy, when you're not pulling tape and, and, and evaluating veneer, perfect, one-inch classes, piece of cake, Bill Moore stick. That's over 100 years old. Baseball hat, okay? 
okay? We hardly even notice that. That is critical equipment. It is for me. It is for Jeff. 1942, that thing's been around for 70-some years, okay? And that's a critical part of his kit. We have the cruiser vest, only 50 years old now. Ben Meadows, 1968 and thereabouts, started marketing cruising vests. Now you see what happens is the time that's elapsing between each of these innovations is falling quite significantly. Only 10 years later, guess what? Synthetic fleece, polar tech, okay? These things might not, you might not notice it at first when you look at something like this, but we're all out there with a very particular set of tools that work well for us, ultimately trying to make our jobs easier, okay? Next we have the handheld GPS, sorry. 1995-ish, when they really kind of came into to being for Jeff, that's still what he's most comfortable with, that's easy for him. He leaves a clip here, he navigates, okay, works well, 20 year old piece of technology. Ultimately, the iPad comes around in about 2010. So Jeff has figured out how to put together all these pieces from the last 175 years to create that smile in his day-to-day -day work function. Okay, 2012, I'm finishing up grad school. I want to be a forester, okay? I did other things for undergrad. I did some other things out of college, but I wanted to get into forestry. Coming in late, your only option is pretty much go to grad school because you can't, nor do you want to go to undergrad, okay? So I'm working for guys like Jeff. I got my herbicide license, I'm out there spraying plants and trying to establish a consulting shop of my own. So we're shopping for solutions. You know, Jeff had used some stuff, may have been mentioned here. Um, some other solutions didn't work all that well. I want to be super efficient. I want to get out there. I want to figure out how to process this data quickly and get out of the office. All right. My first few years back in 11, 12, I come home every night and I'm sitting on my computer. I got the paper, I got the Excel. My wife said, what the hell are you doing? Is this why you got into forestry? Well, sheepishly, I said, well, no, not really. I, you know, I just, I got to do this. She said, you know, your kids are three and five, two and four, whatever they were at the time. My dad, growing up, he was a contractor. Every night in his office doing estimates, doing takeoffs from plans, okay? And I decided back then that I didn't want that. I wanted, you know, maybe not banker's hours, but pretty darn close, okay? I wanted to be done at four or five and go fish or play with my kids. So we got into this routine where it was like, geez, what the hell is happening there? So we're looking for these solutions. I'm carrying this computer around in my pocket, okay? This computer that's more powerful than my desktop was 10 years ago. And yet, I'm writing on paper, throwing things in Excel. It's just, it's just stupid, right? So that year, I teamed up with a buddy of mine who kind of did some software programmy type stuff. And I said, hey, can you, can you take my tally sheet and just make it, make it do this? You know, like my tally sheet, I'm collecting data. That's all I want to do. Just make it so I don't have to transcribe this when I get back to the office. Sure, you know, computer folks, few hours, a couple days later, here, Dom, what do you think of that? Wow, that's pretty slick. Well, can we do this? You know, a few days later, he goes, hey, how about this? We're just kind of, we like wasting time on silly ventures, right? So he was enjoying it, I was enjoying it. We kept going, and the, and the more that we played with this, we said, geez, we, this is, there's some value here. There's, there's something that the existing solutions are not satisfying, right? That is to say, <coughs> an elegant, easy solution for this hardware that we all own. So we launched Forest Metrics in 2013, just over five years ago. Adoption was pretty swift. Um, consulting foresters, industrial foresters, state agencies, big firms, little firms, educational institutions. And over these next few years, we, we learned a lot, okay? It was probably around 2015 that we discovered the chest pack which I will demonstrate later and love showing to anybody who's interested, um, which is a really efficient way to deal with a tablet in the woods. Oftentimes people say, well, how do I use this in the woods? Well, chest pack really kind of turned that, gave us a really good solution for how to manage that hardware in the woods. 
other tools started popping up. Okay, we want to say, gee, yeah, Jeff likes his Garmin handheld. A lot of people in this room do too. It's great. When it breaks, I would encourage you to check out GPS apps instead of replacing that piece of hardware. Okay, my last Garmin broke about four years ago. It kind of forced me to commit to one of these and try it, and I was hooked. Okay, Avenza maps. All of these great tools that can work in tandem with something like an inventory solution. All right. So, a couple of weeks ago, a month or so ago, NSAF, New England SAF, they had a uh, 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 the spring meeting or the annual meeting. 300, 350 folks. One of the topics, as it often is these days, is technology, field technology for foresters. And the theme of the event was lessons learned. And they wanted me to do a presentation on lessons learned. Now, that, that's kind of tough, right? Like, lessons learned, what are we talking about here? Lessons learned as foresters, what have we learned as a company? But the more I thought about it, everything that we learned over the past five years, okay, everything that we learned as a company came down to two things, everything. And yours got to it, and I'm sure others are thinking the same thing. One, everything must be easier. Okay, that, it might sound simple, but that's what all of this stuff boils down to. It's got to be easier. We spent five years working with people, one-on-one -on -one training, teaching them how to use this system that was pretty sophisticated, pretty darn powerful, but at the end of the day, we're saying, wait, shouldn't people just be able to pick up something and do it? You know, this, this day and age with these apps where you just pick it up and you touch a screen and, hey, there's, you know, angry birds or whatever, and you're just, that's the expectation. Sure, this is complicated software, but the expectation is it, we should just be able to pick this stuff up and go. Why can't we make something that's easier for people to actually pick up and use? The second thing, everyone hates change. Okay, everyone. Nobody enjoys changing horses. Okay, unless you got a really tired old horse that is, you know, heading to the glue factory, and you're looking forward to a fresh ride. Most people, we don't want to change. So what we focused on was, okay, how do we make something that's exceptionally easy and doesn't really require people to change what they're doing? Okay. So this year, we took that model, that model that we built over five years, and we said, how can we make this easier? And it's, it's easy to say, oh, well, actually, at the end of the day, it wasn't that hard. And it's easy to say that now, but that was, Eight months ago, we weren't quite singing that tune until we kind of figured out how to really repackage things, okay? Bring this to 2018, where we launched Forest Metrics Pro, which Jeff is now holding in his hands. He was one of our early beta testers as somebody who lives two miles from me, and uh, you know, I, I pay him with beers. Um, so what is Forest Metrics Pro? It is an Apple iOS system built on FileMaker database software. We're not anti-Android, we're not anti-Windows, but FileMaker runs on Apple. Our customers are probably about half-half Android, Apple. Okay, how many people are Android in this room? How many people are Apple? Yeah, bingo. That's pretty much our, our customer distribution. Android users grab an iPhone, uh, an iPad for cruising. Um, you know, some will grab an iPhone just for the data, the handheld data collecting function and not not even uh, registered or activated as a device. It's a program with a free 30-day download. You can go to our website, you can download it. It is a five-minute guided setup. You download it from our website, it walks you through in five minutes, and you will go cruise, guaranteed, okay? You will analyze the data, and you will report it directly from the device. There's no desktop required, okay? That's really what sets this apart. Every time we introduce another layer, another layer of, well, we have to take this cruise and, and figure out how we're going to do it in the office. And then we have to set this, send this, this, uh, these plots to our device. And then we have to do this. And then we have to send this data back to this old 32-bit DOS taste machine to process the data. And then we got to send it over here to produce. We're trying to get away from that. This is kind of a, a, a new model where we can provide a full forestry solution without people having to leave their phone or tablet. Okay, so I'm gonna go and just plug in a device here so I can show you live what the heck it is that I'm talking about. Okay. 
Okay. Hooray! Okay. Yeah. Big round of applause for Dell for putting that great situation together. Um, yay, Dell. Yay, Dell, right? See, they all stink as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Things should be easier, right? Shouldn't I just be able to plug in and show the darn presentation? Okay. Course metrics. You are looking at an iPad. This is an iPad Pro. It's the same size as an iPad, the full size iPad. Um, runs on iPad minis, runs on iPhones. I'm going to show it to you on the iPad full size because that seems to be our most common size these days. I, I started with a mini, it seemed handy in the field. Well, the full size wasn't really all that much bigger, especially with something like a, a chest pack where it's hands free. So, you download Forest Metrics from our website. This is what you see, okay? You start here with the template wizard in the top. Now, we're just gonna walk right through. This is that five minute guided setup I told you about. We can get into the weeds later if you want, but the point is to get something in your hands and go out and cruise, right? So, you're answering questions here. What type of cruise? Variable radius, fixed area plus. How many are for variable radius? How many fixed area plots? Sorry guys, variable radius it is. You can <laughs> enter any basal area factor, you can plug in your own, if you're, uh, you know, if you have a calibrated prism or something, we'll just say 10 factor prism. Next, okay, this is common language stuff. You're answering questions. Set up your free list. What state are we in? We are in South Carolina, but I'm just gonna say all. This is just gonna show us all the species in the, in the country. Um, yell out the most obscure species that you saw most recently, quick. Persimmon, okay. Persimmon, how about something in the A's or B's? <laughs> Persimmon. Okay, more. Just a couple. Dwarf pack bear. <laughs> I tell you, what can I say? Make these up. No, I. I dwarf. Gotta, which one? Dwarf hackberry. Okay, well you're gonna get. <laughs> dwarf live oak. You challenged me, man. All right. Well, I know I got hackberry. So this is what the FIA believes is a tree species. Um, so we're kind of going on their expertise, and maybe right, maybe right. you broke the FIA model. Okay, okay. I'm Sorry. just going to say drooping juniper sounds okay. fun. That's Coulter pine. So, but you can see, I'm just I'm picking off the the species in my area. We could say Carolina hemlock, and we can say, well, actually, we just call it hemlock. So we can change names of things. We can use number codes, letter codes. Oh, I already had a hemlock, so it's saying, <laughs> hey, you can't do that. So I'll just call it Carolina hemlock. Okay, next. What are the products you're working with? We send it out with default, pulp and saw log. Okay, that's, you call these things whatever you want. Say, well, I call it saw timber. Okay, I have pulp. What other products are you guys working with? Chip and saw. Chip and saw. Okay, so chip and saw. And what's, what's the most common log rule in this part of South Carolina? International? Sure, it doesn't matter. The, the beauty of it is you can just run this cruise one way, you can come back, flip the switch, process it the other way. So, and you can use up to 12 of these things, okay? So you get a veneer, grade, whatever products you're actually calling in the field. How are you evaluating individual trees? Okay, you have a picture here. Are you single product by merchantable height? Are you multiple products in potentially varying lengths? Do you call every 16 foot log product? Do you call every eight foot log product? Do you do a dot tally? A lot of different ways that people are working in this room. And I guarantee that they are all accommodated between this and the dot tally. We'll just say multiple products varying lengths, okay? Doesn't mean you have to call multiple products, it means you could possibly. How many products are you calling in a tree? Do you usually call a product and maybe two? Do you usually call saw timber pulp, etc.? I'll just say we're typically calling two products in a tree. How do you call heights? Are we, how many people call their heights in 16 foot logs and half logs? How many people call in eight foot sticks or bolts? How many in number of feet? Okay, well, you should all be happy then. <laughs> Logs, half loads, bolts, sticks, number of feet. If it's number of feet, you can just edit the, the drop down list. We'll just leave it on 16 foot logs and half logs because that's how I do it and this is my presentation. So I'm gonna. <laughs> Diameter pick list. Defaults in one inch classes from five to 40. But most of these lists, you can just edit them. If you work in two inch classes, you know, the little, the, the keyboard pops up, you can just edit this list. You can make it whatever you want. If you have to call down to four inches or if you start at six, very flexible. We say next, 
do you have to call additional things? Like you're gonna be calling a species product diameter height. Who in this room has to call something like growing status or canopy position or cut leave, additional tree level attributes? Anybody have to do stuff like that? Yeah, so it's there. You, you have these, you actually have four of these buckets you can set up for every individual tree. You could call a growing status and a canopy position and a cut leaf and whatever, how many butterfly houses there are in the tree, okay? You can call them on every single tree. We'll just turn that off for now because you know it's certainly less common, but very easy to set up. So that's it, we just, we set things up. Now I'm sure there might be things, well what about this, well what about that? I'll show you where you just go into those settings, but for the purpose of downloading something from the internet, okay, in five minutes, setting up your primary cruise template and hitting the woods, we just covered the kind of the obvious basis. So I'm gonna start a new cruise, a new cruise file. I'll call this demo five. You can do things like entering your date, your job name, you know, all these things that show up on the reports. How many people, when they go out there, they just, they start a cruise, they have an individual plot, they go, they're doing hip chain intervals, they're just navigating under the GPS. How many start with one plot and wait for me to finish? How many people have a grid laid out and they say, well, I have three stands and I have 20 plots here and 30 plots there. How many are single, just go out, hit the woods and start cruising? How many people have a grid laid out and they, okay. So this is what we'll do. We'll just say we have multiple plots in multiple stands. I have a stand, it's 15.2 acres. I have six plots there. Now, I won't get into the details of how you could import a KML and have it build a grid and all that. We just don't have that kind of time. But again, I'm just trying to keep this simple. So you have a grid, you've, you've, you've laid out your cruise, and you're just kind of populating this cruise file. Okay, and I'll say I need 15 plots in stand two. Ready? Yes, start. This is gonna shut down my template, open up this cruise file. So we're up to about six minutes now. We set up our template and we started a cruise. We have plots, stands, and reports. At the bottom, we have file functions. We can go into the settings, and I'll just give you a real quick taste of the settings. You can go into the settings, and this is where you can go deeper into the weeds, your tree list. You can change all of your weight conversions by species, your form classes by species. Um, you can uh, uh, go really deep into the weeds. You can set merchantability specifications. What products are appropriate for which species? What are the minimum diameters inside part for said products for said species? It can get as deep as you want it to, but as you saw, you don't have to do anything, okay? You can come here, you go to your plots, and you say, well, I got out of my truck, I'm in stand two, and I'm in, sorry, and I am in, sorry, in stand one, I'm on plot three, okay? So I started, I got out of my truck, I'm at plot three, okay? This is it, this is our tree tally page. Add a tree. We have drooping juniper, 14 inches. And we, we have a log of drooping juniper saw timber and one and a half logs of pulp. Okay, that's a tree tally. We'll keep this going. We have persimmon. What's your persimmon? What, what six inches, is it a weed tree? <laughs> six inches, we have a log of pulp. Okay, and that's it. Carolina hemlock, 13 inches. We have a half, well, we're not gonna have a half. We're gonna have one saw log. We're gonna have one and a half logs of pulp. We get back, oh wait, there's another drooping juniper. We have the copy button. We hit copy. Now we have two drooping junipers. A couple of things that are happening as you're out there because you're just, you know, you're swinging your prism at this point. You're getting those trees in there. You can then go around and make changes. You can go and measure things, you know, pull tape and, and reevaluate your products. Um, but when you're standing there, Couple things are happening. The moment you call a diameter, it's giving you the diameter. In, sorry, the moment you call the diameter and enter a height, it's going to tell you what the diameter inside bark is at that point in the tree. So as you're walking up the tree, you can get a pretty good idea of well, it may not be what's there in reality, but it's what the math thinks should be there. So that can be a good clue that you might want to tweak your form class or something. You're also seeing over here the limiting distance of that tree the moment you put in the diameter. North Live Oak. Uh, eight inches, boom, limiting distance with our prism factor is 21.7. And you can always go, there's a, a limiting distance calculator where you can type in, you know, decimals, you can enter your slope, all that stuff. That's all right there. But again, we're trying to make things easy and make it efficient. So you're standing there, you're calling trees, you're getting all this information, you can still go back and change things. That's it, we'll call this done. That plot's done, okay? And from here, I'll go to the next plot, okay? 
carry on. I'm going to go over, we can show just very briefly plot level data. You can take photos, okay? You can take photos at your plots and these can all just be exported. Here we go. That's plot one. Now that's plot two. Um, pretty poor regen. <laughs> you can take notes, all right? You can auto locate when you add a tree or you can have it locate manually so everything's geo referenced. Um, but I'm going to go to kind of the end here because we have 10 minutes left. I want to wrap this up and I, I, I'm determined to finish on time. So we're done. We just tallied all of our trees. Pretend we just ripped through 42 plots. It was a good day. Okay. This, the analysis all happens at the stand level. We're in stand one. Okay. A couple obvious things. You got how many plots. This is my acreage. How many plots are complete. We go to analyze stand and we push that magic orange button. Yes, I'm just gonna run it on the completed plots. And I'm gonna flash a couple times, go through a couple motions, and here we have our analysis. We have our summary. These are, are for our stand total. These are our species, basal area, TPA, average diameter, average height, uh, MBF tons. Boom, that's it. That's your, that's your stand level analysis. We have all kinds of other volume tables, volume graphs, diameter distribution, so forth. I don't wanna bore you with all those details but I'm gonna bring it back home where I can show you that now you ran the analysis and, oh crap, I didn't actually, uh, I didn't, I have to delete that. I didn't finish all of the, uh, the stand analyses. So it said, hey, you gotta go back. So I just deleted the second stand. We don't need that. Okay, so reports, you're, you're back at your truck. I wanna see stocking table, okay, boom. <laughs> This is obviously impossible to see. I don't expect you to, 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 to really be able to digest this, but it's volumes by diameter class, by species, by product, okay? You push a button, you could print this right out. You could email it to somebody, okay? You, can, you could text it to somebody. Your report is done, okay? You haven't even gotten back to your office. Your report is done. I'm gonna cancel that. So a lot of reports, again, I'm not gonna just make your eyes bleed with details, but this is basal area by diameter class by species. Basal area bar graph on the top, table on the bottom, uh, region data, tree level data. There's a whole lot in here and a whole lot that are being built right now. This is a brand new version and we wanted to get it out there, but there's a whole library of reports that are coming online. But that will hopefully give you the idea of just how easy it can be, okay? We, we, we set up our template, we started a cruise file, we collected data, and we just sent out a PDF of the analysis. A couple other things, when you're back at the home page, we've done things like, well, geez, it has to be easy, right? Well, what if I need the answer to a question? Well, all around forest metrics, there's these frowny face icons that are pretty much cuts from the manual. What are we talking about with tree measurement method? What's that all about? What do these things mean? Well, here's what they mean. Here's that cut from the manual. We have a whole library of YouTube videos, okay? Online video tutorials, where you push that button, goes right to our YouTube uh, uh, channel, you know, the YouTubes that the kids are doing these days, okay? You, you have all these videos. It's on that interweb thing. It's the it? interwebs, <laughs> I keep hearing about it. So this is how it works, and you can click on those, and it's it's me talking with a live screen, and you know five minutes on this, three minutes on this, just the quick answers. How do you set up a dot tally, for instance? And I'm sorry we don't have time to show you. I'm just gonna show you. I'll just say done, home, close. I just want to show you really quickly the, the dot tally because it is super fast. I'm just this is just another another file that I just brought up. I was showing somebody earlier. Okay, dot tally. You have 16 tally sheets, customizable with diameters and heights. Okay, 16 tally sheets. What do you want to do? We're going to go to our plots. Now again, silly species. This is, this is American Plum. This is a tally sheet. We have diameters, we have heights. We have 16 sheets across the top. I'm going to go to balsam poplar. 14 inch by, that's big for a balsam poplar. 12 inch by 32. I touch it. This is, this is a dot tally. Every time I touch that, I'm tallying an additional tree. So if you can work within 16 tally sheets, and sometimes you might have you know, 10 or so species, a hardwood pulp, a softwood pulp, a other hardwood bucket. If you can work within 16 species, 
and you don't have to take, you know, growing status, stuff like that. This can be exceptionally fast. And this isn't just limited to 100% tally. You can use this for sampling. You can, you can do a sample cruise with dot tally sheets, okay? I go to my American Plum, add some of that, go to my Big Cone Duck Fur, add some of that, and so forth, okay? That's it, that's dot tally. And there, I, there is nothing faster, okay? There is no faster way that you can be tallying trees except for maybe a clicker counting sticks of saw log and pulp. That's about it. But as far as detail, 16 species, sampling or 100% tallying, that's it, okay? I'm gonna bring this back quickly and hopefully successfully to this, uh, this, uh, okay, how do we close this thing here? Go back to our slideshow and we, uh, from the current slide, and we're using our <coughs> so tables, graphs, tables, graphs, we'll keep more tables and graphs. This is like, this is trees per acre by status, okay? Trees per acre by status, by diameter class, and, and so forth. And at this point, you probably feel like this. Your eyes are bleeding, okay? <coughs> it's been a really long day. So I, we have a little bit of time for questions and answers, and then I want, you know, a minute or two to close it up. Anybody have any questions? I would love questions, specific, broad. Yes, Claire. Can you export, I know you don't wanna to go to the computer system, but can you export so that you can then take that inventory and like grow it? Yeah, absolutely. So the question was, can you get stuff off of this? Uh, yes, all of the data can be downloaded, exported in XLS, CSV, all that kind of stuff. You can get all your raw tree data out. You can actually buy FileMaker for your Windows machine or Mac and you can have all your cruise files on your desktop. It's not just a mobile device. We wanted it to have that capability, but a lot of users will also have FileMaker on their desktop so they can review their cruise files. Heck, you can use that. You can have your paper tally sheets from a sale tally where you didn't want to get paint all over yourself or all over the device rather. You're going to shit it all over yourself. Um, and you can go back to the office and you can enter all your data on your dot tally sheets at your computer. Okay. Good question. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, you said data analysis happened at the stand level. Yes. Do you do any aggregation up multiple stands up into a track level with stratification and all the proper math? Yep. Yep. So the 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 first analysis happens at the stand level, and then you can certainly restratify. You can wiggle plots around. You can say take plot two, and now that should really be in stand three. You can restratify pretty much on the fly. You can rerun your analysis. Stands can be combined into a track level. Those are additional reports that we didn't really get into for sake of time, but yes. Yep, Any, uh, in the back there. Well, I'm not familiar with the Apple products, but do you get a ruggedized version of the tablet or you just, they're cheap enough to buy one of them? Well, well <laughs> no, not yeah, that I mean, not that these one. start at 300 bucks. This is a $300 device. It's faster than the mini, it's faster than the iPhone um, in an $80 waterproof, shockproof, right, case. Um, I'm the only one that I know of that has broken it. We have about 600 people in the field, 600 active users. I'm the only one that I know that has actually broken a device. Um, it kind of becomes one of those things where people are just accustomed to having smartphones and stuff on them. You know, you, you're not gonna go and throw it in the back of the truck like you did your, you know, Juniper Allegro. Well, why do you want to? You know, you don't need to throw your phone in the back of the truck. Um, any other questions? Any other Combined questions? Data yes. In the field, uh, between two cruisers? I'm two, sorry? Can you combine data in the field? Yes. On the same yeah, day? it's very easy to merge cruises. So you both have your device, you're, you're together, you're within 30 feet, Bluetooth. And one person says, share this. The other person says, oh, that wants to be shared. They take it, they push a button and import that into there. Um, and there, you know, and there's no, no limit to the number of cruise files that can be merged. Yes? Your template just set up, can you spread that among two cruisers so everybody set up? Yes, absolutely, and that's what we typically recommend. So everybody using the same species names, the same products. Um, it's not necessary, but it can certainly be helpful if you're working with a dozen people. What a lot of our clients use, kind of more the enterprise size clients, is they use something like Dropbox, which is totally integrated. Of course, the iPad's not on now. Um, where directly from Dropbox, you can open up a cruise file on the iPad. You can take a cruise file on the iPad and send it directly to Dropbox. So the administrator back in the office he is getting or she is getting cruises as they come in from different people. They can then do all the merging in the office on the desktop. Um, so, I, I, yeah, sorry. 
Yes. Georeferencing on these devices is meh, you know, 30, 50 feet. It's, it's fine for a lot of work. Um, what's nice is that for about a hundred bucks, you can get a wireless dongle that will bring that accuracy down to like a Garmin handheld. Now, a lot of our users say, well, I'm getting 15 feet on this. I don't know about you. Well, fine, maybe you are, but most of us just get one of these just for that extra, uh, uh, extra accuracy. It's short money for additional accuracy. Heck, if you're concerned, you can get a sub-meter one of these for your iPad. You can get centimeter grade dongles for your iPad. So you can take any of these devices and make them as accurate as you need to for pretty short money. Any other questions? You mentioned you could generate for point location. How robust is that? Um, it, define robust. Uh, like, is it just simple grids? Can you do grids by different grids by strata? Can you do random points? Um, grids, yes. By strata, <coughs> yes. Not random, yes. The beauty of this is this program speaks in KML to everybody, okay? So you can actually take a GPS app, and I see we're like almost out of time. I'll, I'll, we'll probably call that the last question. I'm here all day, tomorrow, et cetera. Um, you can take an app, you could go and like draw your stand boundary. You could send it to Forest Metrics, create a grid, send that back to a different GPS app that you like to navigate on. It's kind of open source in that regard. We aren't a GIS. We just play nicely with all of the GISs. Okay, so I just want to bring this back to the end, okay? This is where I want to be. I don't want to be in here. I don't want to be here, okay? Well, one kind of final thought here. I'm not here, believe it or not, to sell Forge Metrics to you, okay? I do a lot of presentations where we're talking about other products. I can tell you all about Plot Clones and MVG's product and, uh, and heck, T-Cruise, Two Dog, whatever. And we are often presenting on that because my, my philosophy is I just want to get the information out there. We don't want a customer for whom we're not the best solution. I want everybody to know about all of their options because frankly, there aren't that many. If you want to use a smartphone in the field, you have three, four options, okay? So I'm, I'm just trying to educate you, give you an idea of the lay of the land. What, you know, the only thing that I want you to really take away from this is hopefully you got something out of this or at least this conference at large that you can take back and hopefully find a way to make your job a little bit easier because you know this is just five years ago still making them happy thank you very much i appreciate your time five o'clock